People often argue over Android versus iPhones, but the real debate should be middle-aged Gen X morning shows versus Hoppy Hour. Guess who wins? We will let you decide. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. And now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Ryan Hoppy and Pastit. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Always going in, never doubt it. Never worry about the dollar. Need a source or trending topic. Be the hottest, search about us. Competition microscopic, never copied. I'm a giant rolling weed up, now we flying. H O P P E. H O P P E. H O P P E. You already know how we are in the system. What's going on? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, hanging out with you and you. And don't think I forgot about you for the next hour. So you can always leave me a voicemail, 856-49-HOPPY, 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Now, a lot of radio shows begin their show by reading emails or social media messages they got the day before or since the last time they recorded, and all you hear is compliments towards the host. On this show, Happy Hour, I aim to be as genuine Mm -hmm. and as real as possible. So I've been making some rage posts this week. I'm not really that angry. I'm just kind of grumpy that, woo, I was 30 years old and now I'm 31. Like it flew by. And I think it's a sign of me getting a little bit older. I'm just a little more cranky. There's a lot to talk about people not knowing how to drive in Florida. And I noticed this thing. So if you're listening worldwide, I record in St. Petersburg, Florida. I live in the Tampa Bay area, but I'm not from here. I've lived here going on 10 years, but I'm from Chicago. And I notice if somebody who's from Florida, a Florida cracker, if a Florida cracker comments about the problems in Florida, it's applauded. But when an outsider from Chicago, I don't even want to call myself an outsider, but someone that's not from here, a transplant comments, the overall comment I will get from a true Florida born person, a Florida cracker, they always go, well, if you don't like it here, go back to Chicago like first of all and i'll get to why i'm talking about this but i'm able to admit that there are problems with let's say illinois you can be from somewhere and you can have pride in something Mm -hmm. and admit that it's messed up i love chicago i love driving around the city listening to the radio listening to music but i can admit that their mayor is garbage that the construction is a big scam, that the taxes are really high, that the food's really overpriced, that there's not a lot of opportunity, that the weather sucks, that it's not as safe as it used to be in the suburbs. But I also like the sports, the food, my friends, the culture, the environment. People from Florida that are from here need to realize that there are problems with Florida. Mm Mm-hmm. One of them is the roads, because you have this age-old debate that I've been dealing with since I moved here. It is that I don't think that people from Florida know how to drive. But when I say that, people go, no, it's the transplants that are moving here. It's the snowbirds. Oh, really? It's the transplants and the snowbirds 
why when you go to like Georgia or you drive through Tennessee, traffic is very well organized. But up here, nobody realizes, even though the signs will say, you must merge in three miles. Right lanes are closed in Tampa near downtown by like Ashley Avenue or whatever that road is called. Everybody waits until the last minute to merge over. They're not doing that in the Midwest, I'll tell you that. And again, when you bring up that angle of they're not doing it in the Midwest, everybody goes, go back to Chicago then. I don't want to go back to Chicago. It sucks. It's cool to visit. Because I made this post. I said, Florida has a major problem with random crap being in the middle of of the road. And some listener of the old radio show I used to work on, his name is Stephen Wink. Father of the year. His picture is him holding the kid up in the air while he's at the beach. A real father of the year. He commented, well, if you don't like it, then go back. And I said, I'm not going to go back just because you want me to. And then he's like, and that's why you have sank and failed at every radio job you've ever had, which isn't true. And then I told him, well, I did quit this job I had in Tampa that I was at for seven years because there was a lack of an opportunity, and I'm the one that quit. And then I put up a video that's on my YouTube page about it and why I quit. It's a 13-minute interview when I had this guy named Drew Lane from the Drew and Mike show on. And then I said, and with the sports radio job, you know, I didn't know about baseball. A reasonable answer to a Florida cracker attacking you. What does the guy do? Mm-hmm. He doesn't respond. He unfriends me and then deletes the comments. And I'm like, but I thought you were such a tough Florida guy. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be people that are going to be like, Ryan, why are you talking about this? You're giving the trolls, you know, too much attention. I am a single man who lives with his cat, who does radio, who got a vasectomy, who goes to Kava bars, records his podcast, works radio events for Beasley Media Group and goes to bed and has sex and smokes weed. What I'm saying is I live a very boring life. This is exciting to me. And when you work in the media business, you're going to get comments. And I think it's tacky if you ignore something that's worth baiting with. If somebody messages me and goes, and it's always some like trashy dude. It's got like a beard. He's wearing a flat top hat. It's always that like dude I wouldn't be friends with. I notice I have more female listeners on this show than men, but I'd notice that the dudes that I wouldn't have been friends with in high school usually go, oh, go back to Chicago. I'm like, okay, whatever. It's just something I've noticed recently, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Can we all just get along? Mm -hmm. We're so divided as a country, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery. We are so broken apart. But there is one thing, I think, besides the nerds and people that like to say the word sports ball because they're contrarians. They're so cool. But I think there's one thing that we can all agree it's football season. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. The last seven months have absolutely, positively gone by very slowly. Or fast, rather. I don't know why I said slowly. The last seven months have absolutely flown by. It feels like the Super Bowl was just two minutes ago. And the NFL is back. Woo-hoo! Tonight, it is Thursday, September 5th, and the Baltimore Ravens are playing the Chiefs. I've been noticing, I uh, follow this radio show called Justin Scott and Spiegel out of uh, Baltimore on their 98 Rock. And it's one of the best morning shows around. But I notice this trend that every year at the beginning of the season, the Ravens fans have hope. We all do. All our teams are zero and zero. Yeah. And then all of the grumpy wives and girlfriends that go, Well, no, I'm not going to have my man for the next six months because football's on. Were you paying attention to your man when you're on TikTok all day? 
or talking to your sneaky link. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. But I've made a lot of posts this week. Said the one about random crap being in the middle of the road. Then I did a whole video and segment on Happy Hour about people that bring their kids to uh, Kava Bars. I believe it says, if you bring your kids to a Kava Bar, make sure they aren't running around like a McDonald's 1990s playpen. Thanks. And I got a lot of angry responses about that. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I notice people that are single or that are responsible when they have sex don't care. But I notice whenever you critique a parent whenever you are not a parent specifically but whenever you critique parents in public or you critique kids or you critique anything like that the people that have kids get defensive because they probably realize oh hoppy's talking about people that bring their annoying kids to kava bars that run around while they think it's their playpen I think I probably do that when I bring my kid to Walmart. It hits kind of a soft spot within the person because they realize their kids probably do that too. And there's this annoying entitlement with people that have kids that they think, oh, because I'm a mother or because I'm a father, I know more than you. No, You just happen to knock up a woman during the most basic human act, which is having sex. Whoa, that is such a profound, deep thing. Trying to keep this clean for the radio. The old me would have got dirty. But you had sex and you knocked up a girl. That means you actually don't know what you're doing. Unless you're married or you're prepared. Anytime somebody who has kids and they weren't really prepared, and they're bad parents, and then they try to project that they know more because they're parents, you're actually dumber than the people that don't have kids. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Everybody's all afraid of the big vasectomy, man. I, It's weird. You have this doctor you know, doing this stuff, but it's responsible. I don't get it. Parents get so defensive, specifically single dads. Like, do you really care that much? Or are you just bored? Everybody's bored lately. Maybe it's just me talking about me just being bored in general. But you know what is not boring? Is this thing called the Dabbleverse. Mm-hmm. Now, for the 99.9% of you out there that don't know what the Dabbleverse is, let me explain this to you. And I've been wanting to cover this for a while now, but I haven't really known how to discuss it because I didn't want to, you know, jump on the bandwagon of getting clout Hello. and clicks on social media. I'm loading up this video. The Devilverse is a bunch of failed slash C to D list comedians. The biggest name I know is Stuttering John, John Melendez, who worked on the Howard Stern show from like 89 to 2004. And then he quit, and then he went to go work with The Tonight Show, and he sucked there, and he's done stand-up comedy, and he's passable as a comedian. I saw him once in 2017, but he's a deadbeat father. He doesn't care about his kid that's trans, and he does videos all day where he begs for beer money, and he gets drunk, and he's just repulsive. So you have that guy in this thing called the Dabbleverse, and then you have all these other comedians, Kevin Brennan, Gino Bisconte, who's this mutant. You have all these idiots that ride off the clout of hanging out with Anthony Cumia from the Opie and Anthony show when he created his network in 2014. So you got all these angry midlife crisis Gen Xers yelling at each other. The only one that I find interesting is Chad Zumach, and that's because I've been friends with him since I worked in Cleveland Radio. Anyway, it's a lot to cover. It's a lot to discuss. Because when you look at it, you're like, you're just a bunch of dweebs doing podcasts. But then I go, what am I? I'm just kidding. I'm not a dweeb. But a lot of times I've been wanting to critique this whole world known as the Dabbleverse. But I go, I'm going to appear like a cloud chaser, like somebody that wants to clicks. But this headline here, I have been following this cat's career for the past four years. It has been absolutely positively fascinating. His name is Aaron Imholt. He did a morning show that was like an Opie and Anthony kind of ripoff in uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, and he had a lot of listeners up there. 
he's like a your typical sociopathic shock jock but the catch was like he was like born in 1987 or he's like 37 38 so he was a millennial and he did this whole rant where this girl uh got the job he wanted he applied for a job in des moines iowa in like november december 2020 and what happened was he didn't get the job and this girl got the job and he was all mad about it. So he did the old radio tactic of like a radio war and he was copying Opie and Anthony's Jocktober where they would make fun of other radio shows. And he was kind of like pretending that what he was saying was just a joke, but he called her like a fat pig and that she should lay with the dogs in the ground. He said all these awful things, but he was kind of saying, oh, I'm joking when I say this because he wasn't like man enough to just openly say it. Anyway, every single feminist in radio is like, this guy sucks. The next day, he's fired from his job. It made all the radio news. Everybody was talking about Steel Toe Morning Show in Minnesota. So the last two years, this dude who does like a spot-on Anthony Cumia impersonation. I've had people compare me to Bubba, T-Man, Man Cow, Howard Stern, Opie and Anthony, other people at Rover, they go, you remind me of those guys all the time. But I try to have like an original personality when I do it, like to try to like not emulate the 2000s humor and the way they talk. But I'm telling you right now, this headline gets even more fascinating. So this dude starts dating this girl that he cheated on his pregnant wife with. And she just looks like your typical side chick. Like she's got tattoos. And she's just Ganky, man. Like she's not bad looking. She's definitely like a 10 out of 10 in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Anywhere else, you just look at her and you're like, ugh. And she does OnlyFans and that. Her name is April. And Aaron and April had this really bad breakup in April. Oh, wow. That works. And um, it just has been crazy to watch. Well, here is an interesting headline. He was interviewing and doing a podcast with this drunken loser podcaster named Gino Bisconte, who's engaged to this girl named like Kina Thompson, Kina C. Thompson, who is just this girl that shows off every single part of her body on OnlyFans. And uh, he's like 57 and she's like 37. And Aaron was trying to be cool on the show. He was interviewing Gino and he's like, I got a naked picture of this woman. I believe it's his rival's wife. And he sent it to him on the live stream. Well, Gino's girlfriend doesn't like Aaron, so then Gino becomes a bitch and rats on Aaron. And then Aaron gets into a little bit of trouble with the police. No! Happy Hot Topic! Right here. He made the news. A local podcaster is now facing charges for something he allegedly did while live streaming his show. Aaron Imholt is the host of the Steel Toe Morning Show. You can look at the reporter doing the news clip, and I'll tweet this out at Ryan Happy Radio. He has this look like, why am I talking about this? We got plenty of crime in Minneapolis. We're home of Derek Chauvin. That has been on the air for at least a decade. Fox Science' Karen Scullin joins us now to explain what is happening here. Karen? 30. He's like, what the hell is going on? Seven-year-old Aaron M. Holt made his first court appearance this morning for disseminating private sexual images without consent. Uh-oh. But he appeared to do this while actually live streaming. I bet you thought I wasn't coming. Yeah, doesn't he sound like Anthony Cumia? Listen to this. Pretend you think this is like a millennial Opie and Anthony. I wasn't coming. Welcome to the show. It's Welcome. This is the Anthony Cumia show. It's me. It's me. It's 37-year-old Aaron Imholt, the host of the Steel Toe Morning Show, mm. a YouTube podcast with about 13,000 subscribers. But one of Imholt's May shows has him in some legal trouble. He was reported for sending a photo of a naked woman that he knows to a person joining him on the podcast. <laughs> Listen. I'm going to give you some advice, Aaron. I've worked with some big radio shows. And in the moment, you want to appear cool. If it was working with Mike Calta or Rover's Morning Glory or the person I'm still friends with, Drew Garabo, when you go on air, you want to impress the shock jock. You want to appear like you're the coolest dude. And you literally, I went on air. I talked about 52 reasons why I hated my ex-girlfriend in 2019. I absolutely regret that. 
You often, when you're on air, you want to outshock everybody. You want to be the man of the room. But then, like, you're going to regret it five years later. That woman reported the situation to police, and now Imholt faces criminal charges. Did you check? I, your- do, I like tattoos more than I think. Your boy didn't do too bad, did he? <laughs> and those words are now so creepy too. Like that whole like boys' house type of like vibe. Like your yeah, boy didn't do too bad, did he? <laughs> bad, did he? Until your ex ditches you. <laughs> <laughs> And those words are now part of a criminal complaint against Imholt. The court documents describe a relationship breakdown between Imholt and three others. He started disparaging them publicly on his show back in April before sending the nude photo in May. Here's the thing about talking crap about other people that screw you over. I have had a very public breakup with Rover's Morning Glory and Mike Calta. And I'll talk about it a little bit here and there, but you don't talk about it over and over because if you did get screwed over by somebody, if you talk about it once and you just make a video and you say, here's the reference point of what happened, then they can always base it. But what happens is, and because this is a part of being in radio wars, what happens is people forget about what they were mad about and then the person that has the more listeners or the more money always ends up winning and that's what Aaron is doing wrong is the fact that he's got a lot of haters because he's an outspoken, nerdy 37-year-old with a pretty good podcast. But the problem is he keeps talking about people's personal lives when his personal life is messed up. You gotta like talk about the news and content because when you keep talking about other people all the time, it's gonna backfire on you. Mm-hmm. It's called the law of attraction. And I know people go, oh, that's phony baloney. There's something to it, though. Today, other podcasters are using it as material for their shows. And then you have every other 50-year-old talking about it. I'm only going to talk about it this one time because I have found this absolutely fascinating, watching this from afar. It's like a soap opera. And what's funny is I'm a huge radio nerd. I liked Opie and Anthony. I liked Rover. Um, Howard Stern in my later years, Op- um, I just said Opie and Anthony, Man Cow, T-Man, Bubba the Love Sponge. I liked all those shows. But the one thing that I've had is you never want to meet your heroes. And all those guys are all just degenerates. They're all shock jocks. And the problem is you never want to meet your heroes in life. That's why whenever you go to like, let's say, social media and you see a video of a kid trying to get an autograph from LeBron, it's like that kid's going to forever hate LeBron because the people that are at the top are at the top because they're sociopaths that take advantage of other people. That's how they get to the top. That's why most morning radio people are weirdos is because they they want the 400,000 people listening to them because they were losers growing up that had nothing and then they talk behind a mic because they're too ugly to be on TV. I am not an ugly person whatsoever. I'm a pretty good looking guy. I work out. I try to keep a great uh, bit of routine on my skin. When you date two Gen Z girls, you learn about how to take care of your skin. But I don't show my face a lot because... I'm not a hot chick. If I was a hot chick, oh my God, I would be filming every second of this show. I'm just saying. But the problem is, at some time, you got to bow out. And if anybody is sending this to Aaron, or Aaron, if you're listening, at some point, you got to just bow out of the drama and go back to doing actual content. It's something I've noticed is you get into this trap of talking about other people. It really is karma. I don't know. I find that absolutely positively fascinating. People get so wrapped up in it. Sometimes, like, all this madness will go on, but then you're like, someday you're going to be dead. You know, like, it's it's, it's all nonsense. I'm a very unique person because I'm a little nihilistic. I'm a little atheist, but I'm also spiritual. So I have, like, a little bit of moral because I grew up Catholic, but I don't believe in God whatsoever. So I even though I'm outspoken on this show and I talk smack about other celebrities, I never talk bad about people that do me wrong because I want to be absolutely quiet and let them sit in their pain. That's what Aaron is doing wrong is he's responding to all his haters. And also, this is going to be the only time I'm going to talk about other 50-year-old dudes doing podcasts because, frankly, it's not that interesting. 
856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the U.S. or the U.K. As long as you're listening to my show, that's all that matters. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. Hang on. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. Now niggas know I'm from New York. Oh, shit, I love California. I ain't from back when N.W.A. Rock the black and gray raid and shit. Or some gangster shit. Niggas wasn't thinking about hoes and how maintenance is the coupe with the tranquilizer roof. I the two tone the blues just to ride up the strip for the look on sunset. You sun up the sunset, niggas be on some pimp shit. But you already know this. If you ever know this, by the looks of me, baby, I'm holding it. I ain't telling if you ain't knowing I'm a dog. Meet me at the Lamont I'll be sitting out front in the back watching the star is born And you ain't getting gone, at least no time soon Cause we heading over to the Viper Room to get high On whatever your heart desires, but you can start giving head while we ride sunset Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. California's the Mecca, hydraulics for switches on low riders, the dates on cold wires, west side, I throw it up, my nigga, it's all love, I'm calling out every grip and blood in LA, essays, hit the strip on dubs, let's hit the club, my bitches and stars, stripping for dubs, mommy, what's up, Lambo doors up, when they see me, they show me love, hump the home, pull a loaf and roll up, the chronic and blow dubs, better hope it ain't no gunplay, cause sunset Friday, it's Crenshaw Sundays, and I love LA, like Snoop Love and Six Trey Where would I be without Dre to live and die in LA All we know is no riders and sex And what happens on sunset stays on sunset Got the whole strip throwing up dubs And since Pac died it ain't been no California love
happy hour. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by Mitra Nine, Kava and Kratom. When I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that it's the best Kava and Kratom around, I am a man of my words. If you go to MITRA-9.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, you can save 20% on the best kava and kratom around. I'm a man of my words when I tell you it's the place to be. All right, we're going to come back on happy hour, and we're going to keep this party going right after this. Happy hour. It's time for happy in the morning. If a Chicago accent and Florida man went on a wild weekend and ended up with a kid, it would be happy hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Other stations are tuned in too. Ryan's tall like the sky. Yeah. Six for nine, he's fly. From Chicago to the bay. In St. Pete, he'll stay. Talk of love and fame Dating life's his game Oh, it is News on stars he spills With laughter fills What's going on? Happy hour, all you need Yeah Rich and Ely, take a seat Yeah, bitch Ryan's got the groove mm -hmm. Happy hour makes you move 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you will always be able to email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. All right. We have so much to get into. So for right now, enough of this. Oh, happy Hot Topic. Oh, man. I saw this, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, this cracked me up. <laughs> it's official. Baron Trump will be attending New York University. Is there any other university he'd be going to? It's like if you live in Florida and you don't want your kids to like move that far and you're like, I'm going to have you go to USF or UCF. The 18-year-old arrived for his first day of college today with a backpack slung over his shoulder, flanked by Secret Service agents. Barron is enrolled in the prestigious Stern School of Business here. I wonder what it'll be like having that kid in your class. I'm sure he gets picked on a little bit. At NYU in Manhattan, the Stern School is very selective. They accept just one of every 20 applicants. Yeah, having Donald Trump be your father, especially in New York City, definitely helped. Not saying Barron's not smart, but uh, if he had any other last name, he might not have been one of the 20. NYU. The word is on um, nepotism, which also goes on in morning radio. Is a huge urban school with 50,000 students, and it's an open campus, very much part of the downtown scene. I'm wondering, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for Barron Trump, what it's going to be like with security issues, mm -hmm. especially in a city like the uh, Big Apple. Like lots of campuses, it was roiled last spring by protests. A tent city popped up, but it was quickly dismantled. Yeah, tent cities creep me out. Like, I don't ever go to liberal cities like New York City or whatever. But I'm telling you, whenever I see tents, I'm like, I'm not going near that. The tuition at NYU is $58,000 a year. The dorms are pretty typical. But Barron will not be staying in a dorm. He'll be living at home uptown in Trump Tower. Nice. Donald Trump says he's pleased with his son's choice. It's a very high-quality place. He's a very smart guy. Hell yeah. 
Meanwhile, Trump's nephew, Fred, author of All in the Family, The Trumps and How We Got This Way, continues to denounce the former president. Yeah, if you're a relative of Trump and you're having to talk bad about him for attention, you're a loser. I'm not a Trump guy. I'm also not a Kamala, whatever her dumb name is, person. But what I am is I see things for what they are. And if you are, let's say, Tim Walz's family in Nebraska, and you're like, I'm not voting for him, or if you're Fred Trump's, uh, if you're Fred Trump and you're talking about Donald, if you're having to talk about people in your family for clout, you are what they call a loser. If I'm asked, I will campaign on behalf of the Harris campaign. And Cool. No one asked. Nobody ever went, oh, my God, is Fred Trump going to be uh, supporting Donald? Like, we don't care. And get the word out. And now another family feud is erupting. This one between Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Walz mm-hmm. and his oldest brother, Jeff. Yeah. I'm 100 percent opposed to all his ideology. Jeff. He just looks like your typical Republican boomer. I'm not surprised. Jeff says last night he told News Nation that he hasn't spoken to his brother in eight years. Congratulations. That means you're a deadbeat. Whoa, it's so cool how you don't talk to your family. I bet he's really missing out on talking to you, buddy. Whoa. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Oh, happy hot topic! All righty. Now to the possible twenty-four billion dollar supermarket merger. Rhiannon Alley is here with the details, and Rhiannon, the CEO of Kroger, is now saying he will lower prices significantly if this prices. Mm-hmm. It'll go through. That's right, Michael. That's exactly what he's saying. And we know grocery prices continue to be a major concern for most Americans. And that CEO. Yeah, unless you're the one percent. Even though one percent's like, I don't feel like paying three hundred bucks to fill up my pantry. Mm-hmm. Of a top supermarket chain, Kroger, as you just mentioned, is vowing to lower prices, but only if a proposed merger is approved. Now, the CEO ch- is trying to save his company's proposed merger with rival Albertsons. The government wants to block the $24 billion merger because it claims it would eliminate competition and lead to higher food prices. But Kroger CEO has told a court hearing that the merger would allow the companies to lower prices. In a- yeah, I don't trust them. He seems like your typical boomer that just cares about all the money. You know, the whole sociopathic boomer generation. But what I mean by it is just lower the prices anyway. In an effort to compete. You're making enough money, you scumbag. With Walmart and Costco. And he's pledging to cut grocery prices by a billion dollars on day one if that merger is approved. Now, grocery prices are a huge issue as we head into this election. Duh. Vice President Harris has said on the campaign trail that she will crack down on prices. Well, Oh, will you? Why didn't you do that already as a vice president? You say whatever you want to get elected. Mm-hmm. Well, former President Trump has campaigned on inflation, reminding the public that grocery prices have increased by more than 20% under President Biden. Yeah, it did. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. No! Happy Hot Topic! I find this next head- headline a little fascinating. Because it seems kind of true. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be another banger. Kim Kardashian reminding fans she's an aspiring attorney, sharing the contract she made Sun Saint sign before starting his YouTube channel. Yeah, you know, Kim Kardashian has a lot of secrets that she doesn't want her son talking about, especially when your dad is Kanye West. You know, they got a big mouth. Yeah! Take the victory. You know, social media is such a great tool. A great tool the eight-year-old's been given the okay to use as long as he follows guidelines his mom shared to her Instagram story. Shows him playing hoops in an arcade. It's weird to think that they seem like such greater than us beings, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Kardashians don't seem like humans, but I'm like, they have kids. Does that ever make sense to you? Where you think about it, like, you think about the fact that, like, We're just everyday average Joes, but they also go to the bathroom in the morning. They also, you know, are going to die someday. Like, they still are human, even if they exploit themselves without even knowing. As for what's in the contract, Kim's got to watch every video before they hit the web. No filming Sister North while she's making music. Now she's an artist? Oh, no. 
these Gen Alpha kids are going to really run with the whole being a part of the Gen Alpha name. They're going to think they're Alpha. That's some weird music. And probably Momager Chris Jenner's fave, no sharing personal information. Yeah, Momager is like, you know that screaming you heard in the room last night? Yeah, don't talk about that. About family, or else Saint's account could end up private or deleted. Good but boy, we going to play. Oh man. Ryan, why don't you want to get your vasectomy reversed and have kids so I can have my house sound like this? Good boy, we going I'm good. I like peace and quiet. Go play. No, thank you. Some Call of Duty. God. So far, Saints content includes video game streams. And winning tickets while playing arcade games. Hell yeah. Early gambling. Did you get 200? It all goes down on his channel titled The Ghost Saint. So close. All righty. Hopefully they don't uh, bring him too much near a, a camera when he turns 18, but you never know with Momager. Oh, happy hot topic. Oh, my goodness. Cardi B slams speculation she was shading Nicki Minaj with her recent maternity shoot. Of course she was. Cardi B, it's the unspoken thing that I don't think it's talked about enough. Obviously, everybody has influences and gets into something because of something. You know what I'm saying? Like my influencers, like Howard Stern, Opie and Anthony, but I try to be my own personality. Cardi B is a more likable Nicki Minaj. It is crazy how much she copied her. Mm-hmm. The rapper, who is pregnant with her and estranged husband Offset's third child, shared pics to Instagram September 1st showing Cardi with her baby bump on display as she posed on a motorcycle in front of a closed storefront spray-painted with graffiti. The street-style art featured the word homesick, but fans were noting that in faint white paint over that appears to be the word pedophile. <gasps> Some fans thought the detail was an intentional diss toward Nikki's husband of five years, Kenneth Petty, a registered sex offender who was convicted of attempted rape in the first degree in 1995. Listen. I like Nicki Minaj's music. I never had like over the top respect for her, but I'm telling you when she dated and married this guy, I was like, you are a loser. One Instagram user comments on the post, does it say clear as day in the back pedophile or am I tripping? Nah, you're tripping, bruh. While another adds on X, Cardi B seems to be taunting Nicki Minaj's family by taking photos in front of graffiti that reads pedophile. Yeah. But Cardi doesn't let the rumors last long. Yeah, she's going to clap back. Watch, they're, they're going to use that word. She quickly shuts down. Spe oh, shuts down, not clap back. Speculation that the photos were a jab at the super bass rapper, saying in a post on X, first of all, we literally picked a random street because paparazzi was hounding us everywhere. Mm-hmm, that's the excuse. This was supposed to be my original first picture, and we had to edit the photos in minutes because the shoot got leaked. Didn't even have time to go over every detail because people were busy trying to expose my pregnancy as aha moment. Yeah, that's what happens when you're famous. Cardi then adds, I'm not using my maternity shoot to be funny. Are you dumb? Still, the Grammy winner has a history of feuding with Nicki, dating as far back as 2017, when rumors circulated that Migos had added Cardi's verse to their song Motorsport without consulting Nicki, who was also featured on the track. Yeah. A year later, video surfaced of Cardi yelling and throwing her shoe at Nicki while leaving Harper's Bazaar's Icons New York Fashion Week party. Along with her maternity photos, Cardi, who shares daughter Culture and son Wave with Offset, posted a sonogram of her baby. And one fan page reposted the image, stating, Cardi shares ultrasound pic of baby Hurricane. To which Cardi replies, who? Oh, whatever. Cool, you had a baby, Cardi. Once again, she probably thinks she's above everybody because she's a mother. You're not. No! Happy Hot Topic! Oh, Katy Perry. She's talking about Orlando Bloom and hers expected uh, or unexpected turn on. Of course, this is the topic of call her daddy sex. Love languages is acts of service. So it's like if I come downstairs and the kitchen is clean and you've done it all and you've done all the dishes yeah. and you've closed all the pantry doors, like, you better you better <laughs> be ready to get your socks. <laughs> Katy Perry. I mean, like literally. <laughs> 
Katy Perry dishing on her turn on. I like to keep it fun. That yeah. I'm not saying like you shouldn't talk about that as a girl, but when you're openly saying this, you're a little slutty. Doors, like, you better you better <laughs> be ready to get your <laughs> socks. Have a little class. I mean, she is pretty, but I'm just saying it's kind of like a little trashy, you know? Like, you better be ready to get your <laughs> socks. Nice, trying to act all edgy for call her daddy. Oh. But Katy Perry, whenever men talk about socks, we're sexist. But when you do it, I'm exposing and I'm, you know, using my sexuality. It's so weird how women get mad when guys sleep around or whatever. I mean, like, literally. <laughs> Katy Perry dishing on her turn on. I like to keep it fun. That is my love language. I don't need a red Ferrari. Shut up. His voice is irritating. Can you imagine, like, dating us? Imagine that tone during arguments. It's my love language. I don't need a red Ferrari. She's like, where were you last night? Oh, my God, Katie. We know you're kinky and you like to kiss girls and you like it, but my goodness. Take your voice down a notch. I can buy a red Ferrari. Cool. You got money. Congrats. You're a self-made woman. Wow. So riveting. Just do the f dishes. I will suck your She's just trying to play it up for Call Her Daddy. She's like, I'm on this show that talks about sex, so I feel like I got to play it up for them. And it sounds like her beau Orlando Bloom isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Hell yeah. It feels Use two fingers. It feels like destiny. <laughs> Orlando knows all that, and he, yeah. he hears me, and he's he meets me there now. He does the dishes. Yeah. Ladies. I mean, well. Oh my God, I'm Alex Cooper. I actually am a big fan of her work. But everything Alex Cooper says, it's like she's extending her words. Hey, daddy gang. I do a podcast for girls that like to sleep around and have sneaky links and something to listen to on the way back from the guy's apartment. Uh, we Listen are up. fortunate to have a housekeeper, but on the yes. weekends, he knows that like that's important. Me the singer is spilling all the tea on her love life on the latest episode of Call Her Daddy, including her eight-year romance with the actor. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, she's tiring to be around. She's probably fun. No one ever said Katy Perry isn't fun, but annoying, very. One of his strengths are when I crumble, he can step in and be that anchor. Because I'm usually just alpha, alpha. Yes. Yeah, we know. You're so cool. You're Katy Perry. You know, I'm like testosterone, testosterone. Right. Oh like, Weird. This. I got this. I don't need any help. But actually, I do you need do. help. I do need a partner. And um, <sighs> like I can be so strong. But yeah, like everybody needs Help. Everyone's a teacher in a relationship. That's how I see it now. And we've taught each other a lot. That was Katy Perry eight years ago. So she goes from talking like a normal woman to, oh my God, I want to give a blowjob. Like, there's got to be a happy medium. Orlando and I, we do a lot of um, couples therapy and we want to evolve. That's like, I think why we're in our relationship is to become better, better humans yeah. so that we can raise this beautiful human being. That beautiful human being... Their three-year-old daughter, Daisy. Oh, yeah, that kid's going to have major issues. I love being a mom. It's the best decision I ever made for my life. Hell yeah, Orlando, don't pull out. She's my gift, I think, for doing all that work, too. We yeah. intentionally brought her into this world. We knew we wanted to have a child. We knew we were going to, okay, let's do it. Let's do it as a celebration of all the work that we've done together and create this being. And so she's the gift. She is exactly what I get for doing that. It's amazing that we happen to do this together. In previous relationships, some people didn't want to do any of the work together. And while Katie doesn't name names, some of those previous relationships include ex-husband Russell Brand and John Mayer, whom she dated on and off for years. Hell yeah. John Mayer's like the luckiest guy ever. You're like, I'm actually not into the narcissist <laughs> Alex not anymore. Really anymore. Not really. All right, I can't take enough of these. Or I'm ha I've had enough, rather. I've had enough of those cackling hens. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Happy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. 
How often are these generations having sex? Boomers, three times a month. Gen X, five times a month. Millennials, five times a month. Gen Z, three times a month. Yeah, Gen Z's not really, they're kind of prissy about sex, you know? You kind of have that attitude where it's like, I could go and have sex nine times a week or go seven months without it. I think Gen Z looks at how much sex the millennials had Mm -hmm. over the last 15 years. And they're like, yeah, I don't want to be like that. Especially if it's like a 35 or 36 year old millennial mom that has like a 16 year old right now. And they were like 20 or maybe even as young as 18 when they had the kid in 2008. And they're like, yeah, I don't want to be like that. It's something I've noticed. All right. We're going to take a quick break. But before we go to break, Caitlin Clark is kicking ass. She secured a WNBA playoff spot. After all those cackling hands, all those racist imbeciles at the four-letter network known as ESPN were hating on her when she wasn't playing very good her first six games in a league where everybody was elbowing her to the ground like a bunch of thugs. Well, here's the deal. It made me root for her even more. Mm-hmm. And one thing I loved is you have LeBron defending Kalen Clark, and then you have this. Charles Barkley spoke to Bill Simmons on The Ringer. These ladies, and I'm a WNBA fan, they cannot have f- this Kalen Clark thing up any worse if they tried. People believe what we say on television. Just because people don't like you or your personality, they can't get on TV and slander you. It's just total bullshit. This girl is incredible. The, the number of attention, eyeballs, she's bought the cards and the pros. And for these women to have this petty jealousness, you say to yourself, damn, what is going on here? And the thing I love about her, she never says a word. But these ladies who I love and respect their game, They couldn't have f***ed this thing up any worse. There's been so much negativity, and a lot of it is just petty jealousness. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ryan Happy Radio.com. Happy hour will be right back. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. Turn, turn me up a little bit. When that music World. comes in, it gets loud. loud, loud. Swissy. Yes. This is a You Heard That New World premiere. On Roy, I've been hitting so long, and I'm a big headed boy. Nah, we ain't on HGH, though I might pick up some weight when I'm running through your state. Nah, 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 we ain't on the clear, we on the runway, and back to back legs. This miss no more drama, and Barack Obama, Rama's feel honest. I put my life on these tracks, you act like y'all wanna save me, but I'm you get get this. Luckily, my therapy is the I just bear my soul, I don't expect nothing back You all welcome, long as you felt I was gon' get my, you know where the hell I'm from I'm from the bottom, so I do this from the diapers Quick, fast, turn the big apple in the cider I do this, I'm a writer and a writer I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do this for the lifers I'm a writer and a writer I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do it for the lifers You welcome You probably never see again 
Somebody so deadly be of the plan Leave a hojito pa' they know when we be in Big up to Biggie and Pac, I do it for them Until I reach Kali, I do it for him Do it for those who can't do for self due to the pen May these bars reach through your bar And mine, when Mary sing, it heals your heart God solely stands filled, you are Love is a battlefield, we all get scars oh, I put my heart into this This is much more than marketed music The reason I gotta market to do this Is people going through pain, I'm just walking Damn, through Loki, this Damn, where the hell you find this one? This ain't no marketed music People going through pain, I'm just talking to do it well, We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by DZBZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. When I tell you that that is the best Delta 8 CBD around, I am a man of my word. At DZBZHoney.com, they have lollipops, lick the lick the lollipop, the rubber. Honey sticks and a jar of honey at dzbzhoney.com. And at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H O P P E, to save 20%. This is also being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. When I tell you that he is the best MMA trainer in all the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. 2700 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg. 727 821 4097. That's 727-821-4097. Amiracademy.com. This is also being brought to you by Fortify.com. F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E.com. The best, and I mean the best pre and post workout in the game. At checkout, when you go to F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E.com, use keyword Ryan20. This is also being brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com, the best printing company in all the Bay Area. On the invoice, tell them you heard about it from Happy Hour. And it's being brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop. I went there today, and I got a great haircut. I feel so handsome. And there is a deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you go to RichKBarber.com and you sign up for a haircut, and then you go to 4545 West Kennedy Boulevard, after that, or you call 727-286-0891. Mm-hmm. When you sign up for the haircut, tell him I sent you and he'll save you $10. I don't take many pictures of myself. 
but my latest haircut is at Ryan Hoppy Radio on social media. We're going to come back on Hoppy Hour, talk about John Stamos, Jada Pinkett Smith, uh, Travis Kelsey, flooding in St. Pete, and much more. Syndicated across the world and heard exclusively on every podcasting platform by searching Hoppy Radio. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Did you know that Ryan Hoppy got a vasectomy? Well, now you know, and we aren't even sure why we told you. Yeah. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. To happy hour, time to laugh with Ryan's power. Wacky fun and silly jokes. Happy hour loves his folks. Happy hour, happy hour with Ryan Happy. Yeah, he's the topper. Grab your drinks and join the crew. Crazy stories just for you. Ryan's here to make you grin. Let the happy fun begin. Happy hour, happy hour with Ryan Happy. Last and never sloppy. Got your popcorn, got your drink, turn it up. 856 49 Hoppy. 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Ryan Hoppy's here for you. I am. All righty, enough of that. Let's get into the news here. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Yeah, I was just f***ing around so much. This Get out. Get, get going. The Church of Scientology didn't have mercy when it came to John Stamos. The- Do they ever have mercy? It's a cult. Here's a problem I've noticed in Tampa Bay. I don't know if it goes on in L.A. as much. But you go to any other place where Scientology doesn't exist, and everybody can agree that it's an awful religion. Not even a religion, it's a cult. But wherever it's based, where there's money, people are afraid to speak out because they might pay radio ads or TV ads. I'll say it right now. Scientology is a effing cult. Full House star recalls his experience being recruited by the infamous institution as a teenager and why he was ultimately told to leave. He explains on the Friend in High Places with Matt Friend podcast that he ended up at the organization without realizing it. I was uh, in an acting class. And there was this hot girl. She said, you know, we're all meeting at this address on Hollywood Boulevard. You know, come after. And I was working at my dad's restaurant at the time. I said, Dad, I got to go. I got to go. So I went and... um, I've driven by the building. It's so soulless. It's in L.A. It was the Scientology building. John then explains that he was taken into a room and given an e-meter, a device used by the church that uses two metallic cans to measure electrical currents through the person undergoing the auditing process. The actor then says he started making references to the cartoon Rocky and Bullwinkle, and things went downhill from there. They said, come over here, and they have this e-meter where you're holding these two cans. So I started, you know, hello, you know, like doing <laughs> Yes. And it was like, I was doing a, a Peabody in the Wayback Machine, uh-huh. you know, Sherman and Peabody. Yep. John says the church's response was, how rude. They didn't like that. And then uh, yeah, I was just. <laughs> oh, the church's Scientology will ruin anyone's life, but you make fun of them? No. Bunch of sensitive babies. Around so much, they said, "Get out, yeah. get, get going," and they just kind of kicked me. Out oh my god! So you're telling me that they didn't let you into Scientology because you were messing around too much? Yeah, you think it. So you were too pretty, annoying for Scientology. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I must have been terrible. E News has reached out to the Church of Scientology for comment and has not heard back. The 61-year-old previously shared insight into his Scientology experience, noting in his 2023 memoir that the woman who invited him also handed him a book quote the size of a brick. John recalls in his memoir, Per Entertainment Weekly, there's a lot about control, controlling your reactionary mind, controlling energy, controlling space, and controlling time. Yeah, the thing with Scientology is my uncle, rest in peace, he lives in L.A., and when they began in the 80s, he had a roommate who was trying to get out of the religion, and they don't just let you go. They try to hunt you down. Where's the part about acting? And who's this L. Ron Hubbard guy who wrote a bunch of his opinions in here? 
He also describes the church's building as grand, ornate, and creepy as f a cross between Chateau Marmont, Disney's Haunted Mansion, and a mental hospital. Hell yeah! What a real religion! In the memoir, are any of the religions real? Our John also notes that the man doing the audit began to question me about committing crimes, yeah. asks if I have negative thoughts about Scientology or L. Ron Hubbard, and probes into some strange sex inquiries. I am whisked out of the room and sent on my merry way. Ah, uh, another day in religion. That sounds like the Catholic Church as well. Mm hmm But if you make fun of the Catholic Church to anyone that's Catholic, no, you're going to burn in hell. See you there. No! Happy Hot Topic! Speaking of someone that's going to burn in hell. Jada Pinkett Smith goes private on Instagram after sharing a cryptic message. The girl's trip actress makes her Instagram account private after sharing a mysterious post to her feed on September 2nd. She's still relevant. Now I know you're going to go, Ryan, you're talking about it, so you're part of the problem, but I'm going to say it again. She's still relevant. Jada's post says, quote, A man can choose to belong to someone, and if he does, he is considered noble. A woman is told she must belong to someone or she is not worthy. The 52-year-old further expands on the message in her caption, adding, quote, even in some of our greatest religious traditions. Oh, you're religious? Whoa! The goddess is rendered powerless without her male counterpart. What are you even saying? Speaking of a bunch of nonsense. You know you messed up by sleeping around. And in others, the spiritual influence of the feminine of mother is not even recognized. I forget that she's a mom. She doesn't seem like she'd be a very good one. She kind of has that Chris Kardashian energy. But she makes Chris Kardashian look normal. And it's saying a lot. We mere mortal women are worthy simply because we exist. And those of us who have cultivated our queendom within our inner kingdom and... Trust me, you're not a queen. You're an evil person. Nobody's ever went, oh my God, Jada Pinkett Smith is so attractive. Maybe 25 years ago, you're not a queen. ...have a deep relationship with the Great Supreme. If we so choose to bond with someone from this space, we will erect monumental love and give birth to treasures. Yeah. Jada's message ends with a note to her followers telling them not to, quote, bond in fear. Is this Scientology? She's speaking like L. Ron Hubbard. She should create her own cult of people in open marriages that sleep around with 20-year-olds. Or they are greatness. The actress, who shares son Jaden and daughter Willow with estranged husband Will Smith, yeah. has not yet commented on her decision to also make her Instagram private. Jada has been more candid when it comes to her private life in the past year, especially regarding her relationship with Will. Yeah, Will's definitely whipped there. Last October, the two shared that they had been separated since 2016, but have no plans to finalize their split. Ah, uh, they're never going to do it. Will doesn't have a guts. At the time, Jada says this to NBC News. In 2016, you and Will decided that you were going to live completely separate lives. Yes. It was not a divorce on paper, right. but it was a divorce. divorce. Yeah, they don't have the guts to go through with it. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been apart. Yeah. Uh, she's the worst. Speaking to someone who's the worst. Mm. No! Happy Hot Topic! Travis Kelsey's reps are responding to an alleged Taylor Swift breakup plan. All right. Before I get into this headline, either they're going to be together forever or they'll break up six months from now and we'll go, see, there was something to it. Reps for the Kansas City Chiefs tight end are setting the record straight after a document surfaced online that was titled Comprehensive Media Plan for Travis Kelsey's Relations Following Breakup with Taylor Swift. Because this is going to end either some way through death or they're together for 50 years, or they're going to break up. This isn't going to last forever. The paperwork, which was seen in a social media post printed with the logo for Full Scope, the public relations company representing Travis, details an alleged media strategy for the 34-year-old if he were ever to split with Taylor, who he has been dating since last summer. 
Taylor needs to eat a cheeseburger. She's so skinny. It's gross. Her arms are like a piece of cheese. It's like cheese sticks. A spokesperson for Full Scope tells E! News on September 4th, quote, These documents are entirely false and fabricated. The word fabricated is very interesting there. And were not created, issued, or authorized by this agency. Mm -hmm. I think there's something to it. Again, by talking about this, all of the fans are going to be all mad about it, but they're going to break up soon. I promise you he's cheated on her. They continue. We have engaged our legal team to initiate proceedings against the individuals or entities responsible for the unlawful and injurious forgery of documents. That's a big word for a football player. As for anyone worrying that Travis and Taylor's relationship may be on the rocks. If you're worrying about them breaking up, you have no life. There's no need to fear, considering Travis has been open recently about his love for the global pop superstar. Here's the thing, is what they say publicly is different than what goes on behind closed doors, you Swifties. I need you to realize this. They will say whatever publicly. They will probably end up having some Instagram post in about maybe at the maximum two years that'll have a collaborator on it. And it'll be like, we we love each other forever, but we're just meant to go different ways. She might not even have that much animosity against him. Weeks ago at a because she knows he can beat the crap out of her a team event when Chiefs announcer Mitch Holtis jokingly asks Travis if he would love me more than Taylor. He replies, maybe not. All right, I've had enough of him. There's just something about that relationship that I don't. You hear me clapping? I don't believe. He goes from thick black girls to a cheese stick. She's not attractive. She's like a piece of string cheese. I was having this discussion earlier with my friends at a kava bar, the Chorum. I said, I don't find Taylor Swift attractive. If you're at a bar and there's 20 girls, she's the 20th girl you talk to when every other girl shuts you down. Ladies out there that are heterosexual that don't see women sexually, she's not that attractive. Because you're a fan of her, you think she's beautiful and wonderful. That's fine. You're allowed to be a fan of her. But she's not that attractive. I've seen cuter girls as baristas in Tampa than her. She's probably boring in bed. She's entitled. And she has no body. She's so skinny. I wouldn't be surprised if she eats like a piece of bacon in the morning and then throws it up. She's anorexic skinny. She's really skinny. And I'm not saying everybody needs to be thick, but eat a cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. And finally. No! Happy Hot Topic! There has been a lot of rain recently here in the Tampa Bay area where I record. And this is why I waited until the very end to talk about it. Because this is not a local show. This is a nationally syndicated worldwide show. So I didn't want to talk about something local. But there's been a lot of rain in Tampa Bay. There was the hurricane in the beginning of August, and my car got stuck in water on 62nd Avenue, and it was very frightening. I don't always believe in astrology, but there's something to it because everybody else gets stuck in water and their cars die, and I see it all over like the Tampa Bay and St. Pete Reddit. Me, I get away. So this is going on here. There was flooding last night. There was absolute rain all throughout St. Pete. And I don't know much about how to build a city, but the infrastructure and the way that St. Pete and this area is built is absolutely, positively not very good. The roads are very small. Too many people are moving here. Mm -hmm. And before I get to this clip, I want to give you guys out there that are listening from Florida a PSA. I have never seen so many undercover cops trying to pull people over for speeding in my life. Everybody out there, honestly, this might not even just be a Florida thing. I really think that the police departments are putting out a new initiative to get cops in undercover cars. I've seen people that are driving like Toyotas that have no yellow license plate, nothing to it that looks like a cop. And I've seen them with the lights. Small D energy. 
Exactly. This morning, a lot of communities around the Bay Area dealing with flooding mm -hmm. and, of course, issues with standing water after yesterday's heavy rain. It's on top of weeks of summer thunderstorms that have brought record rainfall totals. Yeah, and you're probably waking up to rain this morning. ABC Action News reporter Larissa Scott is live in Hillsborough County showing us some of the problems that people are still dealing with, Larissa. Why is this reporter reading off of a phone? Oh, my. This is why the local news is dead. So you got the two reporters in the studio, and then you got this reporter. She's holding a phone reading off of it. You don't have a teleprompter or anything? I'm not saying you have to memorize it, and it looks like it was very early in the morning. But this is why nobody respects local news. You're literally on your phone. And you got this five-second delay. It's a good morning. Hi, good morning, Dan Nadine. All over our area, neighborhoods have been overwhelmed with rain, like this one right here. I am off of Hillsborough Avenue and Hanley Road, where several inches of water is still standing this morning. Someone's car just stalled out before the start of the show. Now, this is a scene people have been dealing with all of across our communities. I can't even imagine losing your car because of rain. You must be really mad at God. It's all part of God's plan, right? Heavy summer rains have been the norm for several weeks now. But Wednesday storms cause flooding many people haven't seen in years or ever before. Yeah, it's scary. My um, parking lot to my apartment, it floods so easily. And I saw all these people with their cars flooded by water. And I was like, I'm never parking near that part of the parking lot again. Several commuters had a hard time getting home Wednesday night with water covering roadways, causing cars to stall. Yeah, like I know you're not supposed to just like drive fast through rain, but my God, to get through going past downtown Tampa, it literally took 40 minutes. Everybody panics. Relax. It's going to be fine. When you panic, things go wrong. We've seen flooding in parking lots and strip malls like near Hillsboro and Hanley. Neighborhoods are full of water too, including in Zephyr Hills, where there's been a local state of emergency for flooding. It's a pretty scary, scary situation, you know. Shelby Lavelle's yard and garage flooded this week, and his septic system is now underwater. It happened within a matter of 30 to 40 minutes that my house was about to take on water. Home yeah. Owners near the Silverado Golf Course in Zephyr Hills are dealing with similar issues. Trying to protect my family and we're trying to protect everything we own here, you know? Communi yeah, I know what you mean, man. Communities that don't typically deal with flooding issues have had problems this summer and those that are prone to flooding haven't been able to catch a break lately. Ah, whatever. I'm not saying whatever like it's not a big deal, but what are you going to do? I am going to play the outro music because happy hour is now over. Tick tock, clocks a joke, we're playing cruel pranks. Hoppy's hour almost done, feels like robbery and banks. Ryan Hoppy on the mic, dropping wisdom, then streams. Syndicated sorrow, now it's time to shatter dreams. Oh, the happy hour is coming to a close. Radio waves fading like a wilting rose. Laughter and joy dissolving in the air, but we'll keep the rhythm. Oh, life's just so unfair. But the laughter's growing dim Eardrums missing Hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM Shout out hit the street But soon the sound will vanish Like shadows in the heat Oh the happy hour Is coming to a close Radio waves Fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy Dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm Oh life's just so unfair Phone lines buzzing But the laughter's growing dim Drums mixing hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM, shout outs hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh the happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh life's just so unfair Clockwork to a show And now it's time to face the silence Like a TV on snow Riot Hoppy held the mic With humor so divine The void left in our hearts Wider than a canyon line Line Empty speakers silent I but coming to an end Like a roller coaster Stopping round the river's bend Hoppy's jokes and jabs These are daily grind Now silence louder than the thoughts We can't rewind Oh, the happy hour is coming 
coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh life's just so unfair The happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh life's just so unfair Happy hour, happy hour RyanHoppyRadio.com Like that? He's gone. Hoppy Hour is now over. (laughs) Hoppy Hour is now over.